So this is the ninth straight day of the war in Ukraine after the Russian invasion. So let's get you a quick roundup in terms of what is happening in, in terms of how Russia's invasion is going. Now, in the first sign of an agreement on any issue since the war began, Russia and Ukraine have agreed on the need for a humanitarian corridor and also a possible ceasefire around them for the civilians to get safe passage. The Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has called for direct talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin, saying that it is the only way in which this war can be stopped. About I want to talk with Putin. I think I have to talk with Putin. The world has to talk with Putin because there are no other ways to stop this war. That's why I have to. Now, President Vladimir Putin, however, has said that the Russian invasion of Ukraine is going according to plan despite the fierce resistance and deepening international isolation and also the reverses that the Russian military has in fact incurred. The Russian forces, meanwhile, are laying siege to the key Ukrainian port city of Mariupol. The city has reported constant shelling for the last 24 hours. Multiple apartment buildings were on fire and the city's officials have said that they cannot evacuate the wounded at this point of time. At just 50 kilometers from Ukraine's capital city, Kiev, there has been reports of intense artillery shelling that's been reported on Thursday. And this is the drone video footage that shows a row of high-rise smoldering apartments. Now, the number of people who have died there is still unknown, but this is the scale of war which is slowly and steadily actually ratcheting up in terms of the Russian offensive. Now, Kiev and other major cities are still controlled by Ukraine, but the United Nations has said that at least about a million people have already fled from the country, mainly seeking refuge and in places such as Poland and other neighboring nations. The main assault force on the capital, a huge convoy of tanks, artillery and other logistical support has been halted for the last 72 hours outside of Kiev. Meanwhile, the US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken arrived in Brussels where he is expected to participate in a meeting of NATO foreign ministers later in the day today. Blinken will visit six European nations this week, including the Baltic states and Moldova, which are on the edge due to the current situation. All right, now to get us more insights in terms of how this war, of course, is going and is there a chance for diplomacy to actually prevail and bring an end to the hostilities, we are joined in by senior journalist Ray Locker, who is joining us live from Washington, D.C. Ms. Locker, it is day nine of the conflict that is unfolding in Ukraine after the Russian invasion. Now, at this point of time, the way things appear to be going, although Russia is making very sluggish progress, it seems to have upped the ante in terms of the offensive it is carrying out. There are reports of more casualties and more people fleeing from their homes. Do you think the war is likely to get worse before the Russians would be willing to negotiate for a peace deal? Well, I think it's a race against time. How fast do the sanctions take, take hold against Russia, force them to do something to withdraw or stop fighting versus you know, how quickly they can destroy what they want to destroy of Ukraine. When they're attacking nuclear power plants that supply 25 percent of Ukraine's electricity, that's a sign that they're serious as well as reckless. I mean, Ukraine was the site of one of the worst nuclear power plant disasters in 1986 at Chernobyl. They want a repeat of that. That laid waste to a huge swath of Ukraine 36 years ago. Um, for the Russians to be doing this is uh, reckless, bordering on insane. You know, is there a strategy or is this, is this just complete madness to be targeting a nuclear power facility in this manner? You mentioned something very interesting, that this is a nuclear power plant that supplies almost about 25% of Ukraine's electricity. Does Russia want to you know, possibly disconnect Ukraine from the electricity grid and through that force Ukraine to capitulate. Is that a strategy that Russia is trying to employ here? 
Well, I can't speak for what the Russian strategists are thinking, but that's something that you would do in any kind of conflict if you want to knock out your adversary. You want to knock out their power. You want to make it so they can't do the things that a civilized country can do when it has electricity. Um, I don't know what the Russian endgame is. I mean, it seems to make absolutely no sense. They don't want Ukraine to join NATO, but this is what they're doing is drawing more nations into NATO. I mean, Moldova and Georgia are going to go into NATO. How is that, you know, what the Russians or Vladimir Putin want? It seems to be contrary to their interests. So everything that they seem to be doing um, goes against their long-term strategic interests. It's a mystery to me. And also on the diplomatic front, uh, Anthony Blinken will, of course, be on a whirlwind tour of Europe. Where he'll be meeting with a lot of allies. Do you think the West has done enough, you know, diplomatically in terms of trying to create a deterrence? Because in respect of the sanctions that have been imposed, Russia seems to be upping its offensive. Well, I mean, it's going to take a while to draw, um, bring Russia to its knees economically with sanctions. I mean, it's happening. It may not happen fast enough. I mean, I think the U.S. government and the European allies have done pretty much everything they can do, aside from entering the war themselves, which they do not want to do, and I think would be contrary to their long-term interests, um, to shore up this, uh, you know, this alliance. I mean, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about whether Germany would do anything with Nord Stream. They are. Mm -hmm. um, all the other countries are stepping up and doing what we people thought would um, that were they were skeptical that would happen. So the diplomatic end, at least from the ally side, is, seems to be working. Whether it's going to work quickly enough remains to be seen. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Ray Logger, for joining us and getting us all those insights from Washington, D.C. Then, Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.